What's up, everybody? Are you tuning in to the Challenge USA on CBS? Well, tune in to me, Tyson Apostle, as I break down each and every episode with my co-host, Amelia Wedemeyer. I'm also a contestant on the show, which gives you all the insider scoop. Amelia, how stoked are you to do this? Tyson, I'm freaking excited. I cannot wait to sit my butt down every single week to watch the show, then come here and recap it with you on the Ringer Reality TV podcast. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other... Well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. Delighted to be joined by Jill Chan today. Jill, how are you? Woo! I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You know, you beat me to the Zoom, and that's because I was on Reddit reading what Jason said on the Vial Files. Oh, no. I didn't want to have to listen, so I just wanted to read what happened. God, did not want to listen to that. No, I know. I have to catch up on that, too. Dang. Um, are you still in touch with Gabby and Rachel? Yeah. Rachel is... My best friend, talk to her every day. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Wow, I didn't realize that. Um, how was it watching their season for you? Woo! Um, I think I'm with everybody else, and like it was quite the journey. It was, um, you know, there were some super high highs and also some really low lows. And I'm really, obviously, I'm, I'm so happy for Gabby with how it turned out with her and Eric. Um, obviously, what happened with Rachel and Tino was... Um, was horrible. It was it was traumatizing. Very hard to watch. It was confusing. extremely hard to watch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, my role, I guess, was I was just like there for Rachel during that time, and she's been there for me during this whole thing. So um, yeah, just mutual support and love. What's what's your theory on Tino unraveling? Like, what happened there? I mean, obviously, um, you know more than we do, but like, like what happened? I honestly, it's so hard to say because I never, I never met Tino. Um, and right. I only saw what everyone else saw. And then I obviously heard things from Rachel, but, um, I'm not exactly sure what happened with that relationship. Um, obviously there is, there's infidelity and that was something that Rachel was absolutely not about. Um, and I yeah, commend her for like holding her ground. Um, totally. but it, it, it was a shock to her just as much it was as it was a shock to everybody else. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was it was super difficult, and I I wouldn't wish this upon anybody to have to go through something like this, and especially in the public eye. Um, so yeah. I think just kind of giving everybody a little bit of space to kind of process because it is so fresh. I think that is just like the best practices at this point. Seriously, and so how are you doing? You are front and center from episode <laughs> one on Bachelor in Paradise. What's it What's it been like? Especially because you did not get a lot of screen time during Clayton season, which. It's a bummer. So how yeah. have you been adjusting to like so much attention in the, these last few weeks? Yeah, um, it has been, it's been crazy. I think like when it first started happening, like the first episode, I really wanted to like crawl in a hole and I was like, no. Um, but seeing everyone's like really positive response, most responses to me have been um, quite positive. Obviously I'm not everyone's cup of tea and that's totally fine. Wasn't expecting that. Um, so yeah, it's been really positive so far. I'm really excited to kind of see like what the future holds, but Um, yeah, it's been, you you can never prepare for something like this. You really can't. (laughs) (laughs) What's it like for your family? I'm always curious. Like, are they watching? They're watching. Yeah. They're watching, but like this, they're like, no, like (laughs) they're watching through, um, through their hands, especially my dad. Oh my God. He's like, every time you come on TV and kiss somebody, I'm just like, he is just so distraught by it. Um, (laughs) but yeah, they, they support me. They just think it's like so funny. They just like, can't believe that it's real. Where do you live? Your apartment's very cute from what I could see. 
Thank you. Um, I live right outside of Providence. So oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I drive through Providence all the time. Oh, you um, really? Yeah. I go to Cape Cod a lot. So I just uh-huh. drive, drive right through. Oh my God. The best. Yeah, it is the best. Your apartment is super cute. What do you do? What's your job? I'm an architectural historian. Oh my God. That's awesome. Yeah. Actually, I remember that from your bio. That's really cool. Do you have like an area of expertise? Like what kind of architecture? Um, so obviously New England architecture. Um, I do, I, we work pr- predominantly like on the East coast. Um, so definitely New England architecture, my favorite time period, I would say would be like mid 19th century. So like Ooh. 1830 to 1870 cool. is like my jam. I love a, I love a craftsman house, just like a really beautiful front porch. Just lo- oh, love awesome. all that. I know. Yeah. Dream yeah. House. That, that's like that time period, right? Craftsman. Um, it's a little can't... later. It's definitely, oh. it's a little later. It's, it's like early 20th. How yeah. do you get into, um, architectural his- history? Like what'd you study in school and like, how did you end up on this career path? Yeah. Um, so I studied cultural and historic preservation, um, at Salve Regina university. It's like a small private Catholic college in, in Rhode Island. Um, so it was, de- it was a mix of archeology, span anthropology, and historic cool. architecture. Um, so I did archeological field school in Charleston, South Carolina. So I learned how to do archeology span there. Um, I actually work in an archeology span lab now, but I just do the above ground resources. Cool. Uh, so yeah, I worked in the Newport mansions, giving tours, and I was just like surrounded by architecture, um, from that time period when I was in college. So I was super inspired to kind of get into this. That's awesome. Um, like, so <laughs> what kind of small talk do you have with people on, on the show? Cause I feel like I work in sports and pop culture and this work, yeah. like the ringer is sports and pop culture media. And like with anyone, then I could just basically talk about TV as like a fallback or whatever. And, and like, I also talk about my work a lot. I'm just sort of curious, like, you know, no shade to anyone else, but that's like a really like interesting and like different career than so many people on the show. Yeah. So like, do you talk about your regular lives? Like, do you share that oh, kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, we talk about, we have so much time. All we have time to do is talk to each other. Um, So like once we, you know, get past all the things like, oh, what do you do, whatever. And then we just talk. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear about people's lives. Like you learn so much about everybody. Um, So if we're not talking about like what's going on, we're talking about like something completely random um, Mm -hmm. or just like about the conditions or just like how hot it is and like complaining. Um, But then a lot of it is just like us shooting the shit with each other and just having a grand old time. How did you first meet Romeo? I, I appreciate that this season so far, a lot of the off-screen data points that are crucial have been incorporated for the most right. part. So like, you don't have to, you, you didn't have to be following Reddit or whatever. So like, how did you oh, guys wow. first meet? I was really glad that was made clear from the beginning. Yeah, I was, I was sure to make it clear because I know last season there were couples that had met and gone to the beach and were like, maybe doing things that were a bit nefarious. And I didn't want that to be like a secret, you know, because it is yeah. like, I wanted to come in like completely honest, freshly. Um, so yeah, oh, Romeo so you don't and I live in the same city. So I feel like no, we don't. Yeah. So I was on a trip. Casual. It was very yeah. I mean, I was. Um, it, it never got anything past a friendship. Um, so I actually met Romeo when I was in New York um, with Kira, and so I had met him. We had like met him the same day, um, and then there was obvious like there was definitely some obvious attraction, um, but we never crossed that line. Um, so we were friends for a while. He, you know, his season was airing. Mine was just about to air. And so the three of us are really friends. Um, and then there was definitely some love interest, but nothing ever happened. I never kissed him. I never went on a date with him. Um, and then I found out that Kira had kissed him in the club and they had, you know, they hadn't told me about it. They tried to hide it from me. So that really hurt my feelings. Um, and yeah. And then I, I didn't really, we, we kind of squashed the beef. So uh, when I went to the beach, I thought it was going to be fine um, because we had kind of gotten over this and I wasn't really expecting to see Romeo there either. So the first time, oh, interesting. You, yeah, the first time you see us talking on the beach is the first time that we've talked since that incident. Since oh, that incident. wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, why is that? Like, why didn't you guys talk? Um, I had to, it was, I mean, the trust had been broken. Like if somebody mm-hmm. like tries to keep something from me, I, you know, obviously the, you need some time to kind of like heal and kind of reassess the friendship. Um, and so I was very much doing that, um, with Kira and with Romeo. So we all just kind of like went our separate ways and, um, it had been months and months and months. Um, and I hadn't really talked to either of them, but we left each other on like a fine note. It was like fine. Mm -hmm. Um, so when it got down there, it was, it was a shock that it was all kind of coming to the surface. 
And why why did it come to the surface? Is it because of how Kira was pursuing Romeo? Like, why do you think things became combustible so quickly? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I was not expecting Kira to be interested in Romeo. And I don't think she was expecting me to be interested in him either. Mm. Um, so I think that was a shock to both of us. And honestly, I didn't know, like watching it back and seeing Romeo say, you know, like he's here to pursue me and he really likes me. That was a shock to me. Like I didn't, I knew that he had had feelings for me in the past, but I didn't know that he was going to pursue me there. Um, Mm -hmm. and there were some hard conversations that we would have to have to have in order to continue in that relationship. Um, and like progress it into like a romantic relationship. So that was really tough to navigate, especially with Kira interjecting a lot. Um, so yeah, it just, none of, none of it went well. It did not go well at all. (laughs) Where are you with both of them now? Um, Romeo, I respect from a distance. Um, I wish him well on that journey. I think he is learning a lot of things, watching it back. And I think he learned a lot from that relationship. Um, and then I'm shocked by how much he's like, based on his social media, how much he's like, taking in the criticism and like yeah. engaging with the criticism. I mean, like he must have incredibly thick skin. So shout yeah. out, shout out to him. Also, I, I know. we, we commented a lot on how much he cried, which I, which I regret. Cause I just feel like let's normalize crying for everyone. Oh, for you know? sure. Yeah. I think you gotta definitely I got to cry. Oh my God. I cry so much. And I think like, especially men showing Same. their emotions, I think that's like really important. Um, so obviously he was in his fields. Um, so yeah, I mean, I respect him. I, I think he is like on his, on his way to growing. Um, I haven't spoken to Kira since, we left the beach. So, wow. um, I'm not sure where that stands, but I do respect the hell out of her. Um, I think she's like a great doctor. I think her career is amazing. Her life is amazing. And, um, I hope people are able to kind of see that side of her versus just like the villainizing of somebody, um, sure. not being able to handle a, a situation in the way that maybe someone else might have. I don't think she came off as a villain. I think she came off as like kooky and yeah. different. <laughs> But I, yeah. I think he seems more villainous. But honestly, I don't yeah. think anyone seemed like wasn't like Brendan and Piper level by any means. No, I mean, definitely, yeah, not at all. Yeah, and I also, you know, we've talked a lot about me and my co-host um, Callie have talked a lot about like, would you want your doctor to go on the show? And yeah. um, you know, like we were like, mm, would you be excited to see your doctor on Bachelor in Paradise? Like, probably not. But I also like don't don't like judge her for it by any oh, means. No, like, not at all. That's how she wants to live her life. Like, awesome. Go, go for it. I just think it's like, it's, it's like, I, I there's pushback to like asking those kinds of questions, yeah. but it's, but it's legit. Like you're trusting yeah. your life with someone or your health or whatever. It's just like, yeah. you know, how do you, what kind of relationship do you want to have with your doctor? So I don't know. Yeah. I, think, I, I mean, think it's legit. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely, <laughs> cause you see me saying like, you're a physician. Like, what are you doing? Um, I obviously like regret that because obviously people can like be, be professional and then have their personal lives. And I think that like, should hold true for the medical field as well. Um, sure. so yeah, I, I respect her and I, I do regret that comment. Um, because obviously people are able to like be, be professionals and, and know when to, when to turn it on and turn it off. Do you have other regrets? Like what's been the hardest thing to watch? Woo. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I try to say, like, I try to say, like, oh, I have no regrets. Um, watching it back, it's like, oh my God, like, obviously I would have handled that situation differently or I should have said this. You know, there's like hindsight is 2020, but I know that in the moment I did the best that I could with the information I was given and under those circumstances. Um, so, I mean, the way it turned out, it, it, it's, it is what it is. And um, Yeah. I mean, I I think I'm overall happy with my experience because I really went into it wanting to like be myself and like show my personality and whatever. Obviously I'm like a little crazy and a little emotional, but who's not, I mean, I'm right. Especially given alcohol and sun. Oh my God. I know. And so I'm just happy that like, I was able to fully be myself and be accepted for the most part. Um, yeah. By America. Who surprised you the most on the beach? Who, who defied your expectations? Oh, you know what? James did. Okay. Um, yeah, because I, <laughs> I literally was like, when they came in, I was like, here's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Seriously. Like, I was just like, oh my God, these boneheads. Um, but in talking to James, like he is, he's really smart and really sweet and just like, not what you would expect. You know, mm-hmm. he surprised me for sure. Interesting. Can we get like a, like an anecdote about that? Because I don't get James. I'm just like, what's the draw? Who is this guy? Yeah. Like, what's he actually like? 
he's really charming and super nice and like actually cares about like the process you know like the interesting was not there to like stick around he was like asking like hey do you like he was asking me advice on stuff and i thought that was really sweet um that he was like really fully embracing the process i was not expecting that i just thought they were just, like, there to bro around and mm-hmm. but, yeah he was fully invested that's cool yeah. uh i'm curious to see if he ends up with anyone then um mm-hmm. let's talk about shanae i have yeah. to say my my biggest surprise are shanae and casey both of whom i either didn't like or didn't care about and now i'm like oh they seem fun yeah What's the Shanae experience been like from to- she was obviously, you know, the villain of Clayton season to right. she seems like a pretty good hang. Like what like what was it like yeah. seeing her on the beach again and and what do you think about her now? Yeah, so obviously I was really nervous about seeing her on the beach because I mean all the only thing the last time I saw her was at the Women Tell All and that was a disaster. Um <laughs> so I just I was really nervous about it. Um but she really came with like her best foot forward and uh, we ended up like having a lot of really great chats and I was able to like confide in her and vice versa. And so I think people are really going to see it like a different side of her. Um, and yeah, I, I just think that's like a testament to like the growth that can happen between seasons and kind of seeing yourself portrayed in this manner and like really doing some hard work. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Do you think she approached it differently? Cause it seemed like she was happy with her role on Clayton season, but now also seems happy to be like, just, you know, macking it with various guys. I know. I think she is. Um, she, she goes, I mean, she is definitely enjoying the, the, the male gaze because she is like so gorgeous. Um, she really is. Yeah. Yeah. So she's a hot commodity. She's a hot commodity in paradise. And I think she's just like really embracing, like being herself and trying to stay, stay true to herself and maybe like take a little bit of like a back seat in some mm-hmm. situations and not really get involved with, um, with any of the women in like any nefarious manner. So. Sure. I like it. I like that. She's just I like it of- too. Just more fun. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, pro, I'm now pro Shanae, very, very firmly. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. From the guys who came from Gabby and Rachel's season, did you mm-hmm. get any kind of primer on them beforehand? Like when you saw Logan and Johnny, like, did you know who they were? Like, what, what kind of things did you know about them? And like, how did those relationships, it just has like friendships begin since their season hadn't aired yet? Yes, yeah, so their season hadn't aired yet, but like the cast list was out. And so sure. I was FaceTiming Rachel and I was like going through and like, I was just like saying names. I was like, okay, Ethan. Okay, Johnny. And then she'd be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then she's like, they're all gems. Like you can't go wrong with it. She was so good. She was so tight lipped. She didn't say anything about anybody. Wow. And so I was like, give me some information, please. Like is, is somebody your villain? Like, is there somebody I shouldn't, but she was so tight lipped and I was like, so mad at her, but she was like, you can't go wrong. She's like, I just want you to go there and like form your own opinion and enjoy it. Wow. This, I is, this is a great advertisement for Rachel. Um, I know. Um, I feel like for her, having Gabby be a part of it probably alleviated the pressure of like needing to tell a friend because right. there was someone you could like gossip with or, you know, exactly. share things with. So it wasn't like you were just you and the producer. So I know. Um, what did she say about Logan? Um, well, after or before, because before she was just like, she didn't say anything before, but afterwards wow. she was like, she was like, he was our only jumper. He was our only one that switched. <laughs> like, but she's always very like political and matter of fact about these things. Um, yeah. because she, she really wants people to be able to form, form their own opinion. So That's she awesome. was like, he was our only jumper. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? Like, were he and Johnny able to speak about their experience when they got on the beach? Yeah, they were, they were able to. Um, so Johnny, it was, it's so interesting because like Johnny obviously like was not ready for an engagement with Gabby. And so, Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't know any of that. So, um, trying to, did he say it? Did did he say like, Hey, I'm Johnny. I made it to final four. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All those conversations happened. Um, a lot of the guys who did some not so great things like Jacob, very much downplaying a bunch of stuff. Like he was like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, I might be a villain or whatever, but no, it's fine. I'm like, is Rachel going to kill me for like being <laughs> friends with you? Like what is going to happen? So a lot of them were downplaying it, but some of them were very forthcoming. Okay. Interesting. Um, did Logan talk about why he left the show? Because I still don't believe that he had COVID. Um, we, I'm trying to think if he said it because we had known that he just kind of like disappeared, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. It was because he had COVID. I'm pretty sure that was it. But like how nobody he says else it's got true. It. Yeah, I mean, he's true. I don't know. Have you listened to Logan's music? Logan has music. Yes, Logan has music. He's it's on Spotify. It's one song. Last time I checked, it had six thousand streams. No um, way. 
I guess you're not close with Logan if you weren't aware of this. No, I'm not. I'm not very close with Logan, um, but I will have to give that a listen. I'm very intrigued. <laughs> I'm very intrigued. Yeah. He's like, it's like a singer songwriter vibe. I don't know how that's going to go. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably like 30 of the listens at this point because I keep like sending it to people, not listening. Oh my God. Is it new? Is it like, is yeah. it hot off the press? Shut yes, up. Yes, it was released like September 23rd or something like that. So, what? Okay, I, yeah. I got to listen to it. Damn. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only, promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And so then when Rachel came, because we, we see in the super tease that she comes down to paradise at some point. Yeah. Did she give any, any information then? Like, what was she able to share? Um, so obviously her season had aired. And so like be, for the viewers, like now. Um, yeah. So I think she was able to share some of like her tips. And I think she was just there for like moral support. Um, and just to see like a familiar face and see, because at that time she was um, still engaged to Tino. And right. so I think it was just like, hey, this works. Like, here's, right. here's uh, a couple. That's going to be hard for her. That sucks. That Although, really seem, seems like she'll, she'll be able to handle it. She'll be um, just fine. Let's talk about the Rhode Island contingent of Bachelor Nation. Did you know Ashley and Jared before the show? I did not. Okay, so they were opening their coffee shop. Uh, and I had, I've thought about yeah. going all the time. Oh, my God. It's so good to go. I love it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so they were opening Audrey's, and I had just come back from the show or like the show was just about to air. And so I just like went to the opening of Audrey's oh and I God. just like walked up to Ashley and Jared. I was just like, I was just on the season. Like it was so <laughs> strange. They're like, Oh my God. And now they've just like adopted me. Like they are literally my bachelor mom and dad. I go Aww. to them. everything. They've been so amazing and so helpful. And I, I love them and I can't think of enough. So seeing them on the beach was they're so they're very nice people. Yeah. They're such nice people. And so, yeah, it was definitely like nice seeing like a piece of home there. And it, that's mm-hmm. what made me so emotional. Like everyone's like, Jill, this isn't therapy. Like actually I's not there to give you free therapy. Cause I was like crying and so emotional, but it's just cause like I missed <laughs> like home and they were just like a little piece of home for me. How do you guys function being hungover? Like, I just like, I don't know. I like, I have one drink now and I'm like really tired the next day. So like, how do you do it? Um, so we, a lot of electrolytes, um, mm. we drank Gatorade, a lot. Pedialyte. What's your choice? It was kind of like Pedialyte. It was like the Mexican version of Pedialyte, um, okay. which is great. And also, um, liquid IV that mm. is like my jam. I brought like two full bags of it, um, because that like resurrects me, but the heat is really tough. Like, but I honestly feel like I could never get drunk in paradise, which sucks. Like, I don't really, really know Wells just has a week four or whatever, but I just feel like I couldn't get drunk. Which is probably for the best, honestly. Interesting. Did, but did you feel like sluggish? I don't know. Alcohol just yeah. really just feels shitty. Like, what did you do to stay cool? And like, when you're feeling like really sluggish from like three days of drinking, like how do you revitalize yourself with if there's yeah. no air conditioning? I'm like, I'm like, this is the barrier for me in paradise among many others. But I'm just like, this seems really hard. I know. 
Yeah. So I am, I have like a double whammy. Like I am allergic to alcohol. So I still mm. drink it socially, but like after one drink, like it hits me so bad and it's like hard to breathe and like anaphylaxis oh, wow. like literally sets in. So um, I had to be really careful. And especially with the heat, like we were just making sure to constantly be drinking fluids because we were sweating it out so much. It's really disgusting. We just had to like all embrace that we were going to be disgusting, sweaty messes because you would take a shower and you'd get out and you were sweating. Like there was mm-hmm. no getting clean. So we just had to like accept it. Did you ever go in the ocean? Why doesn't anyone go in the ocean? Oh yeah. Yeah. I went in the ocean. Um, the ocean's mm-hmm. a little bit dangerous. It, um, yeah, it's definitely, it, it's really, it's stronger obviously than like a lot of people are used mm-hmm. to. And also there's like very many critters in there. They're like, oh, the sea urchins are over there. You don't step on a sea urchin. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, we had to be really careful, um, especially with like the currents and everything. Um, but yeah, we went in the ocean. Oh, it was lovely. So warm. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm a big ocean swimmer. So I'm like, just go in there, people. I know. Um, Wells told me just on the topic of alcohol, I had him on earlier this week. He um, said that he really makes the drinks, which I was shocked by. Like, yes. I can't, I can't believe it. Like, that's just absolutely wild. What? A, that's like actually a hard job. I hope he's getting paid a lot. I know, right? Yeah. He actually is like slinging drinks. He's like washing cups, cutting limes. Like he really is down there, like doing the work. I commend him for it. Was there anyone on the show who you'd never heard of? You're like, who is this person? Um, besides like Gabby and Rachel's guys, no. Like I obviously Lace is like so iconic. And so I had only I've only watched like two other seasons of Bachelor in Paradise, and one of them was the season that she was on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, oh my God, such an icon. But yeah, I, I was pretty much familiar with with everybody. What did you tell your job when you went to film two TV shows? I told them I was gonna go to film two two TV shows. And they were <laughs> and just they like, were, cool. Yeah, they're like, sweet take a leave of absence and then come back. And I was like, yep. And that's what, what I did. What an awesome so, job. I know. I'm so grateful for them because like, they've been so amazing throughout this whole process. And like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. I know a lot of people had to quit their job, but my job has been super flexible. I'm really thankful. Do you have any coworkers who watch? All of them do now. Literally oh, wow. all of them watch now. And so every time I get back, like if it's like a Tuesday or a Wednesday, it's like, all right, tell me like what, what happened here or whatever. Or, yeah, they're, they're always commenting on it, but it's definitely, it's like office camaraderie because now they're sure. like excited about to like rally around. Yeah. That's really yeah. funny. Um, do you get stopped like on the street and stuff? Like do people recognize you in your hometown? Um, occasionally. I haven't Are really you from been, Rhode Island? I'm from Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, I haven't really been out and about since this whole thing started. Uh, I've just been like really busy with work. Um, but yeah, I've gotten stopped a couple times, but like nothing crazy. My life hasn't really changed in like any any crazy manner yet. So I feel like that's like best case scenario. Like you get the benefits without any of the drawbacks. Exactly. Yeah. I'm really thankful for, for everything, but everyone who comes up is always so sweet. And if you do see me say hi, because it is really nice. (laughs) You know, do you feel like you want to move to New York or LA or like, do you like, (laughs) do you want to pursue being more in the limelight of any kind? Or are you happy with this experience so far? Um, so I'm happy with the experience so far. I want you progress my, I want to advance my career. Um, so in whatever way possible, um, I do want to like get my master's degree and all that. I have like a lot of career aspirations. Um, obviously I'm not going to turn down any opportunity that like comes to me, but, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with it, but I don't intend on moving to LA. I know Rachel's been like nagging me and Genevieve's been nagging me to move to LA. And I'm like, I absolutely will not. Um, I'm just like a new England girl through and through and I like thrive here and I just need like a little bit of peace um, yeah, and then it. just do this, like do this fun stuff on the side and have, I, it's so important to like be fulfilled in other areas because this is like not going to be forever. So totally. That's makes a ton of sense to me. Also the Atlantic is far superior to the Pacific. I don't it, care totally. what anyone else says. So I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in the Northeast. It's like just a wonderful, a wonderful uh, ocean. It is. Um, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Genevieve. Genevieve, I feel like is getting a lot of the heat for like not acknowledging the the heat, uh, no pun intended, for acknowledge, not acknowledging that like it's only been two days. And so what's that like? Like how do they make you, how do you lose track of time like that so quickly? Oh and also gosh. I shout out to Genevieve for also being like so receptive to the mean comments she's getting. I, I, you, you people are amazing. There's like one mean comment about me somewhere from a stranger and I'm just like, I need to cr- crawl in a hole. So oh, great I know. job you- by all of you. Literally, I'm pretty sure somebody, people could say absolutely anything to me now and I just will not care because I've heard That's it all. That's all. Good for yeah. you. You really have to grow a thick skin. How does that happen? Like, how do you just, like completely lose track of time, essentially? Um, 
Yeah. So <laughs> a day on the beach, I swear to God, equals like two weeks in real life. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even kidding because t- you feel like you've been with somebody for so long. Um, it's so different because like, even in real life, like you might go on a couple of dates with somebody, but that only culminates into like maybe six hours, you know, with them total. But this, it's like, you are with this person 24 seven. And if you're putting all your eggs in this basket, that's what you're doing. And so it is totally like, from my perspective, I'm like, oh, she's not going crazy. Like this is totally warranted because I know how paradise time works. Um, and because like, Rose ceremonies are at the end of every week and you just really have to make use best use of the time that you have. So if you've like wasted your time or if you've, you know, gotten like led astray, then yeah, like you're going to be super emotional about it. Um, so paradise time is different. I swear it's different. When you say there's a rose ceremony at the end of each week, do you mean like TV weeks or like real life week? Cause it seems like they happen like every three days or something like that. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, it's around that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely it's, it's TV weeks, but that's how we, uh, that's how we like, we don't have our phones or anything. That's how we just kind of like, oh, this is happening. This means it must be this day. Like we are really on like a, in, in a little bubble. What was the first thing you wanted to know when you got your phone back? Oh my God. I just wanted to like call my, I always call my mom and my sister. Um, and then my friends send me captain's logs. Like they like film themselves on like what has been happening in That's like our cute. home life and they send it to me. So I always check the captain's logs, but, um, yeah, I try to like stay off social media cause it's so nice not having your phone. I it's know. like super nice, but then obviously like I miss having the connection with my family and friends. So I always check the captain's logs and just check in with my family and just be like, I'll tell you about it later. I think that's a key portion of also how, uh, not, not that I've experienced this, but I feel like when you put your phone down, time does feel differently. Cause like, you're not yeah. like passing it in the same way. You're also, you're not like facing a clock all the time. So you're just like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just different. I feel like it feels more elastic when you're not on your phone. It is so different. And we have, we really have no distractions. We really are just sitting on the beach up to our own devices. What so, if you wanted to read? Could you read? Um, yeah, we could read. Yep. Okay. So that was okay. good. But obviously like you want to be talking to people, you want to be hanging out, but um, yeah. And it's, it's interesting because you really don't have any alone time. Mm-hmm. So once you get back home, you're like, it is so quiet. And like, right. what do I do with myself? Right. That would, would be really free. That would be both. That would be really hard for me. I, it's really I hard. Like, <laughs> like yeah. <alone> time. <laughs> I know. I love um, time. Jill, it was so nice to meet you. Thank you for chatting with me yeah, and for looking forward to seeing how this plays out for you. Best of luck with everything. Hope your, your career sounds awesome. So I hope you continue to enjoy it. Thank you so much. You're so good being here. Thanks. And we'll be back on Tuesday with Callie.